If you know what this is, then you're a fan of the original Star Trek series, TOS. This is Mr. Spock's readout from the original series, his computer readout from the main computer. And I've tried to be as detailed as possible. I'll show you some of the changes you can make. Uh, for example, if you don't like the colors, but these are the closest colors I can match, at least to my eye and with my monitor and so forth. There are some other things that if you're a true Trekkie you, you may notice that these two bars always blink in unison as do those two bars over there and that again is true to life uh, on the original series. The, my guess is the original panel was wired using rotary switches and they were probably wired in parallel in series to give a, a random effect. Uh, I have not tried to understand what that pattern is and replicate it. These are actually done on a random basis. But again, they blink as closely as possible to the uh, original series. Okay, well let's go look at the code and see how this is written. I'll try to put some of this code down in the, in the description, but uh, unfortunately YouTube doesn't keep the formatting, so I'll probably put this table in there, this list, I should use the correct term. Uh, so that you don't have to retype that all, but uh, okay, let's begin. This is Python 3. It's a computer panel simulation from Star Trek, the original series. Uh, we need the graphics library, and this comes from John Zella's graphics library. He did a really excellent job. It's out there for free. Uh, import time, and we're going to use the sleep function. We need to import random because we're going to use randomness to blink the lights on and off like we are over here. And then we're going to do a random seed. I'm, use, I'm using two different types of random that are available with Pi, and we'll look at those as we go down. The uh, G is khaki color, khaki 4. Again, if you don't like these colors, all you have to do is change these. And you can see I was experimenting out here with different colors. But you can change them to whatever fits your monitor or fits your eye. Uh, the yellow is dark goldenrod 3. The orange is tomato 2 and the B is just plain old black. Uh, this is just a variable I have for the total number of columns is 15. Uh, in fact there's 16 but I'll show you uh, why. Well, actually let's just look at it right now. Column 16 are those three strange vertical bars over there and yeah they don't fit the rest of the uh, the uh, rest of the pattern but again this is the way it was on the original. So there's 15, and then there's plus 1, uh, and this is the name of the variable. This is the list where I stored all the color information. Uh, I've got some other information in this list that I'm not using, but uh, I may come up with a different version of how to implement this. Uh, so the first thing is, it's the column number, so it goes 0 through 15. Uh, the next thing was going to be something else I didn't use. The next is the offset, X and Y offset. Again, I'm not using that. The number here are the number of colors out here. And again, not being used in this version. And then this is the Y offset. And then here are the colors. Uh, for example, green, black, 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 and orange. And then it goes through. And this is the pattern that's in the original series uh, on Mr. Spock's readout. So I've spent hours studying his uh, panel to get those. Okay, let's move down some more. This is uh, something I'm also not using, but again, I'm thinking about uh, changing how I do this to make it a little simpler. The first thing we're gonna do is set up the window and this is just a command from the graphics package. The title of this window is going to be called Star Trek TOS Computer. And you can see that right there, Star Trek TOS Computer. I had to change this to run this on the RPI. I'm running it on an RPI right now. It runs differently than it does on the Windows. It'll actually run faster on the RPI than on my Windows machine for whatever reason. I had to change the window size. The original was this and this for the windows, but I had to downsize it to get it on the TV screen. So that defines our window. We're going to set the background color as black per the actual color of the, of the screen. And then we're going to set these wind coordinates, window coordinates, to 0, minus 12, 
16 and 2 and why is that well that's because the lower left corner will be the x lower left and then the y lower left so this is x lower left y lower left uh, this is upper right x upper right and y upper right then we have two probabilities and this is for our randomness i use two probabilities so that i could flash these in kind of a different randomness so they wouldn't look too mechanical and lights per column we have 18 lights per column and we have a list of display items so all these are called rectangles there's a command called rectangle and we're going to create a list of those rectangles and we're going to store it in there and it, I call it display for Mr. Spock's display our first subroutine our first function if you will is just to set up the window and we start out with a global variable and this is the variable for the far right column the far right column has a lot of exceptions to it and it was a real headache to get that right but this is one of the things uh, that we had to do to, to get that and then the next thing is we're just going to stuff the or we're going to create rather the display list and we're going to fill it with none and we're just going to make it uh, this is a list of lists and it's going to be the the lights and the range information then we are going to let's go down we're still in the uh, wind setup for x in range of 0 to 15 and for y in range of 5 to 13 so this is the data down and data across we're going to go and grab that and we are going to create a list of these rectangle commands so we have rectangle of point x and y plus an offset and point of x plus an offset and minus y plus a, an offset and then we're going to do the same here and we're going to draw that into the window and we're going to loop through this so this is going to create a set of lists that have this rectangle command all filled out and ready to go for us so that when we run this it's going to stuff these rectangles onto the window where they're supposed to be and we're going to grab this this is again an exception for those three verticals over here we have to treat them differently every time and I just did this by brute force so uh, this is just the display and I took the last position I added one and then I created these rectangles with the the vertical rectangles in positions five six and seven uh, at the very last position at the far right position so again these a lot of exceptions for these things you'll see down a little bit later and then we return okay let's go down again this next routine this next function is to blink the lights and you can see the number two here that's because I had to go through two iterations of this thing to get it right and it was a bear but uh, we're gonna blink these at random uh, here's that global variable D that we're gonna use for the last three the right side uh, vertical lights and here's where we're going to do a randomization and we're going to get uh, the random out of the columns and then this is going to be the uh, random number for the lights within the column and then this is just a random number to tell us how often we're going to change the light switch it on and off so this randomly picks one of the rectangles these two a and b and c randomly sets the timing for turning it on and off so down here we're going to have a, a case-like statement in Python. It's the closest thing you can do for a case statement in Python. And you're probably wondering about this if true statement. Well, that's for future changes. I had so I'd done some things differently. I changed it to if true and I think I'm going to do something differently in the future. So I left it in there, but yeah, I mean, you don't need to have that. Okay, so if A and maybe I should scroll back so you can see what A is. A is that randomization of which column. So if we're looking for A, either column 2 or column 14, 
And that's these weird ones where they blink together, like you can see this one right here, the two bars blink together. I have to single those out. So I've got this case statement, and this case, this particular uh, case, is this right here. So I'm looking for either this one or this other one over there where they blink together. And those are 2 and 14 in the vernacular of these uh, columns. So if A is either column 2, which is actually 0, 1, 2, or 14, as we saw earlier, uh, if it's 2, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the color, uh, the first color for G and the second color for G. So this will be G and G for green and green. Uh, otherwise, if it's not 2, then it's 14, and the colors are G and Y, as you can see there, green and yellow. Okay, now we can go down a little bit. So those will set the colors. Uh, these exceptional things create a lot of this code. Otherwise, it would be very short. My first version of this where it wasn't very accurate, where it just put the rectangles on here and blinked them on and off, uh, it, the code was very short. But as I started to go out and like get these double bars blinking together and so forth, uh, and the vertical bars on the right side, the code got longer and longer. Where were we? Okay, so if it's A is 2, then the colors are green and green. Otherwise, it's the case of 14, and the colors are green and yellow, as we saw. If B is in 5 and 6, now A is the column, and B is the light inside the column, and it starts at, for, what, for reasons I'll explain later, it starts at 5 and 6 because of the way I set up my matrix. So this is the first position, this is the second position. So if B is one of the first two positions, in this case it's exactly this one and this one, if it's 5 and 6 and if the probability of C is greater than uh, probability 1, which I think I have it set to like 0.68 or something, then it's going to execute this. So this is where I randomize the on and off factors. So this, I set the first two bars to black, which turns them off and you're seeing it happen right now. It's going off and then back on and this is what's happening right here is it's randomizing to black. Otherwise it randomizes back to the original color which is A and B and in this case we set A and B to uh, green and green. Okay, so uh, now I change the probability. This uses probability 2 and this is for all the other colors, these two colors here. So these two have a different probability than these two down here. And the probability is, uh, I think I set it to 0.8, and it's either black or the original color, and you can see those here and here peeking on the side, doing their thing, so the yellow and orange. And you can see clearly that they're not flashing at the same rate. Okay, let's go down again. We're going to look at these last three columns over there. They're numbered 15. In fact, they're the, actually the 16th column, but because Python starts with 0, it's 0 to 15. So the 16th column, or column number 15, these are those three verticals over there. Uh, we're going to use a little bit different randomization thing because there's only three, so we need a different number. So we're only going to go from 1 to 3, or in fact, 0 to 2. So we're going to do a random integer from 5 to 7, and again because we're skipping over from 0 to 4, the way I numbered these vertically. Uh, the color 2, I'm going to take the color out of my color uh, chart, which was up on top, and we're going to choose from column 15 and then number E. Uh, if the display of D and E is equal to none, so in other words I accidentally hit a, a uh, part of the list where it was not initialized, then I'm not going to do this. This caused crashes early on. I left it in there just for safety. So if the probability is greater than 0.8, then I'm going to display this value and I'm going to set it to black. So I'm going to turn it off and again we are talking about those three over here so you can see they're going from black to either orange, yellow, or green. 
and okay black is turning it off and then back here color 2 which we set right here it turns it back on so this goes back to the original color fills it in and says okay set it back to the original color so it's either black or it's back to the original color so what we've covered so far is all the exceptions here is how to do just the normal things that are not exceptional we just go and we uh, look at again to check to make sure that it's not uh, a blank and if it's not a blank then we look at the probability and we either set the square to the rectangle to black or we set it to its original color and that's what all these others are doing all these ones that are not the exception out here in the middle these few lines of code right here are handling the lion's share of the the rectangles yeah so this is what the code originally looked like was a little bit like this and then as the exceptions started piling up all the rest of it has to do with the exceptions okay and when it does that it comes down here to return and goes back here's the main so first of all we do the setup and we looked at that earlier uh, I'm just looping through this I'm blinking the lights which is that last thing we looked at uh, then I'm sleeping for uh, a small increment of time and this definitely works differently on Windows than it does on the RPI and then I'm blinking it again because on Windows this helps speed it up a little bit okay so we go through here whatever I did 200,000 times and when it's all done it will stop it will wait for me to click on the window which is what the git, git mouse does then uh, do the window close and print done when it's all done okay well that was it you can see it running here it was quite a project it was a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be but anyway I hope you enjoy it and find it interesting in your RPI programming and your Trek adventures <laughs>